So people look at it from a different aspect. But how did we get here? How did we get to this place where we need the death, burial, and resurrection? Well, it all started here. And it said, therefore, God sent them forth from the Garden of Eden. Now, you might think, what a cruel God. How could God send them forth from a place of paradise? Well, the reason why is because they were not, as Brother Godfrey explained, they were not obedient to the words of God. And so God, in his mercy, sent them from the Garden of Eden. Eden. What's the next verse? And so he drove man out and he placed east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword to turn every way. Why did he do that? The reason why he did that is because God was so merciful. He knew that if he didn't block man from touching that tree of life, which would cause them to live forever, they would never come to the place where God could forgive them. They would live in that condition for eternity. And so through God's love for humanity, God kept the way open to the tree of life. And this is what we saw 4,000 years down the road, 2,000 years from this point backwards, where Jesus died on a cross. He resurrected three days later, praise God. And now we have access to that tree that Adam and Eve never had access to. Praise God for that. It is the tree of Calvary, praise God. It is the place where God paves the way, praise God. Where mercy was extended, now grace takes its place. And by the love of God, amen, he has opened the door to the kingdom of God where all men of every nation and every tongue has access to this place called paradise that God never took away. He only delayed it for a short time. That's why we call it Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. Brother George... I asked him to come and preach to us this morning, and uh, I'm so glad he stood up to the challenge. Praise God. Amen. Everyone say, God bless Brother George. Give him a hand clap of praise. Well, praise the Lord. Happy Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that he's been resurrected? Hallelujah. I know I am. Hallelujah. God is good. Uh, 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 Go back one. Praise the Lord. Why don't we go ahead and bow our heads real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we get to spend together, Lord, to learn from your word. God, we've already been blessed, God, by your presence, God. We've been blessed by healing, God. We've been blessed by the word of God that has already gone out before us. Father, help us to believe. Help us to take in, God, what you've already given us, God. Put it in our hearts, God. Put it to work in us in Jesus' name. Lord, let us not forget it, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I want you to bless, God, those that are not here right now, Lord. Move upon them, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we're, we're, not, we're not forgetting about them, Jesus. We want you, God, to, to touch them and to heal them, God, if they're sick. Lord, bring back to remembrance, God, the things, Lord, that you taught them in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. I'm getting a little ringing up here, Godfrey. Oh, praise God. You may be seated. I'm going to go ahead and read you something real quick. 1 Corinthians 2. This is Paul. Does anybody know who Paul is? Paul says here, and I, brethren, when I came to you, this is talking about Paul here, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything, everybody say anything, Anything. among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Isn't that just just something? He, He said, 
you know, through all his revelation, through everything Paul went through, through all the many miracles, through many things that he's done, he said, you know what? I, I've, I've learned so much from all these other people. I've, I've done this and I've done that. I've, I've been used of God. I've, I've north, But I came to you with the understanding and the knowledge that I'm just, I, I just want to preach to you Jesus. I just want to preach to you Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go ahead and take my, take my other scripture. I want you to remember what I just said. This is Paul. That was Paul and what he had said. So in Colossians 2, 6 through 23, it says this. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him. Talking about Jesus here. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. Has anybody been taught the word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. And overflowing with thankfulness. Did you know it's, it's imperative that you're thankful for the Word of God? It's imperative that you're thankful for the, for the things that God has given you. I was talking with my wife this morning about a few things and about, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't necessarily grow up with a lot of things, folks. I'm just going to say that. My mom was a single mother. She, she worked sometimes two, two shifts at a time. And it was just me and my little brother. My older siblings had already uh, gone out of the house and stuff. And we didn't grow up, you know, we weren't, we weren't poor, but we didn't have a lot of stuff. I remember there's a lot of times we had chicken noodle soup for, for dinner. Uh, you know, a couple pieces of bread and stuff at times. And I was talking to Tamara. I said, you know what? I said, where, where people fail a lot of times is they don't, they don't give thanks to God for the things that God gives them. And I told her, I said, I said, you know, baby, I, I remember when, uh, I, I remember when I couldn't afford, you know, a, a shirt or, or you know, even a even a suit or a, a new pair of shoes and stuff. And don't get me wrong, church, it's not that I can afford them. I believe that everything that we get is a blessing from God. It is, you know, da Daddy takes care of us. Amen. Daddy takes care of us. There, there was a need that was brought before. Uh, before me today, it, and it, this person didn't say it was a need, but to me, it's a need. Uh, somebody talked to me a little bit about a situation that they're in, and they and, and they they weren't asking for prayer. They they weren't saying, you know, I need this and stuff. But you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I see my brother in need, if I see my sister in need. I'm going to God and I'm saying, you know what, Father, I, I need you to move in this situation. You know that uh, this person, Lord, in, in my eyes, God has been faithful. This person has served you for so long, God. Don't hold back your blessing, God. Open up the windows of heaven, God. Open up the doors of heaven and let your let your let your mercy flow, God. Let a blessing of God flow unto them, God, in Jesus' name. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rooted up and built in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition. Remember that word, tradition. And the, element, the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. Don't let people talk you out of what you know about Jesus. Don't let them talk you out, out of, out of uh, what you know about the Lord and, and, and the Word of God. If you know the Word of God, you know the Bible says that we need to study the Word of God. Show yourself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Get in the Word of God. Get in the Word. You want to get closer to God? Do you really? Get in the Word of God. Get into prayer. Hallelujah. 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 For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Talking about God in Jesus here. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In Him you are also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. Having been buried with Him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Pastor said before, you know what? If you want healing, you have to believe. You have to believe. It, it takes something. 
it, it takes something within us. We are a creature of God. But you know what? This world throws so much doubt in you. Oh, man, that stuff's just a bunch of hocus pocus. That's a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's a bunch of this. It's a bunch of that. Those people are not really, those people just want your money. You know, they, you come to church and they, they tell you a little something and they, they expect, they pass around a plate and expect you to throw in a whole bunch of money. Let me tell you something, folks. God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need your money. You know what? You know what that is? That's basically helping you to understand that what God has given you, you're willing to give it back. You're willing to give it back. And you'll, you know what, Lord? Here it is. Here's my clothes. Here's my car. Here's my house. Here, here's every penny I've got, God. Take everything I've got, Father. It's yours anyway. It's, it's the Lord's anyway. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? Yes. Hallelujah. Having been buried with him in baptism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That gets me so excited. Hallelujah. In which you were also raised with him through your faith, through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sin. Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. A lot of people say, well, you know, Jesus, you know, he was, you know, he was some great prophet and stuff, but he was, you know, he was done away with because he was crucified. He was killed. Let me tell you something. My God is raised. He's resurrected. He's not some man. He's not Buddha. You can go back and take a look inside Buddha's coffin and find, find the bones of Buddha. You can find, uh, what's that guy's name? Harry Krishna or whatever it is. You can find the bones of all these people. But the grave is empty, folks. The grave is empty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. In Christ. It's not about earthly things. It's not about the things that you possess, the things that you can get your hold on, uh, your, your hands on. It's about Christ. Where's your mindset at? Where's your heart at? It should be in Christ. It should be in, in Jesus and what we're doing for the kingdom of God. Because let me tell you something. Everything else is just fodder. Everything else is just dung. You know, it, it doesn't matter the things that you do in this world other than what you do for God. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle no notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connections with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Hallelujah. Not as I uh, cause it to grow, not as you cause it to grow, but how God causes it to grow. Hallelujah. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you still submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with the things that are destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, humility, excuse me, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. What are you talking about there, Brother George? Let me tell you something. The more we put rules on us and regulations on us, and don't get me wrong, folks. Let me tell you something. It's it's a good thing if you don't go into the in, into the bars. It's a good thing if you don't uh, you don't uh, get a marijuana cigarette and, and smoke it out there with with uh, the people from work and, and do all this crazy stuff. It's a good thing. It's it's good if you if you keep back from from things like that because that stuff destroys the body, and the body is the temple of God. Did you know that? Did you know that that this? Yes, I know, Lord. I need to drop a few more pounds. But this, this, is, this is the body of God. Did you know that, that if, you, if you've repented, if you've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, the forgiveness is what I'm talking about, the forgiveness of your sins, and you've got the Holy Ghost in you. Okay, You've been redeemed, folks. You've been redeemed. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And that your body is the temple of God. You have to take care of your body. You have to take care of the temple of God. We don't come in here and, and, and throw trash everywhere. We don't come in here and, and, and eat food inside the sanctuary. Dear God, no. No, that's, that's not what the sanctuary is for. This place is holy. It's righteous. The presence of God comes in this, in, in this place right here. We treat it with respect. We treat it with holy. Hallelujah. Can you understand what I'm saying today? Hallelujah. And so your body is the same thing. Your body is a temple of Christ. Your body is a temple of God. We need to treat it uh, accordingly. Hallelujah. So I got off on all that. I'm, I'm going to try and stick to my notes, folks. I know it's, I know it's, it's uh, Resurrection Sunday. I know you probably got dinner waiting at home, so I'm going to try and make this fast if the Lord wills. So pastor texted me the other day and asked me if I could do Sunday service. So I, I thought he was actually talking about something different and mentioned it to Tamara. And she said, honey, I, I think he meant teaching or preaching. And yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I got back with him via text right away and asked if that's what he truly meant. And he said, yes, that, that's what he meant. Uh, I said, okay. I said, well, I, I, I mentioned to him that I might have to go into work early and, and miss the entire service all together, and he was still insistent. He said, well, go ahead and prepare anyhow. Uh, I said, okay. I said, I, I brought up that traditionally it was the pastor's role to preach or teach on big occasions like resurrection service day, not the assistant, and what I got back was not exactly what I was wanting to hear. No more tradition. Suck it up, Mumford, was his answer. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, honey. Yeah. No, it came from somebody. Anyway, so what he said, what he said to me got to me, though, folks. Uh, not so much the suck it up Mumford, but the words, no more tradition. No more tradition. So I thought of the conversion of Paul. Think about this. Paul, everybody thinks about Paul. You know, he's a, he's a great guy, and, you know, he... He could preach and he could do these things and he was, you know, he was beaten and he was, he was, uh, he was a castaway and he was, he was this and he was that. And, and yes, I understand he's, he, he's a great apostle. So the apostle Paul was one of the greatest apostles. Some say he was the greatest. Uh, he wrote many epistles to the church. He started churches, went on missionary trips, taught people about the Lord Jesus and did many exploits. However, it was not always this way though. If you really look at Paul's, where he came from, Paul was someone who taught, who was taught under Gamaliel. Now, Gamaliel was a leading authority in the Sanhedrin. He was, he was a big shot. He knew what he was talking about. He knew the Torah from the, from the beginning to the end, to, from the end to the beginning, and all the way in the middle. This man knew what he, he, was, he, was, he was teaching about, and he taught Paul this. So he got all the, the in, in, interest. Anyway, he got all the, the things that he did out of Gamaliel, and it, and it was... It, uh, it was put in him. He was taught by a great man. And, and, and all the things that he learned was from this man. Uh, so it says that Gamaliel was a Pharisee doctor of Jewish law. So naturally, he taught on the strict laws and the ways of the Torah that were to be adhered to. It's only meant to be like this, Paul. This is the only way it needs to be done. You need to do it like this. It has to be done like this. Strict, strict. So no doubt that he was thinking that his way was the right way. Paul thought this. Paul thought like this. Traditionally, if you will. So in his zeal, seeing that this new doctrine of Jesus was clearly blasphemous, heresy, he, he, it needed, he needed to stamp it out. He didn't want this stuff to, to get any further than what it was. He, they, they didn't like this whole thing, this teaching of Jesus. Because why? Because it, 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 it kind of got away from what they were trying to do. What were they trying to do? They were trying to rule over the people. They were trying to get money to come into the church. They were trying to do these things. So Paul went to the Jewish courts to get papers to weed out these Christians and bring them to Jerusalem so that he could go ahead and bind them and, and put them in jail and do other things. God only knows what happens whenever they, whenever they go ahead and they take somebody that, that they don't like. I've been reading up on a, a few things in, in different countries of what, what they're doing to Christians out right now. Did you know that you're a blessed nation? 
Did you know that you're blessed? You are, you are living in a, in a nation right now that you can freely worship God, that you can freely learn about the, the, the things of God. You can freely, freely learn about the Lord and what he went through and, and everything. There, there's, other, there's other nations out there right now. They're locking down. They're locking down. Russia's locking down. China locking down. All these other, uh, all these other nations and stuff. They're they're not liking that. They're trying to shut down Christianity. Did you know that that you you are blessed beyond measure, church? And, and that's something else that we need to be thankful for. You know, a lot of times we take for granted the things that God gives us. You know, it, it's a blessing to actually go ahead and go out and to get into your car, leave your house, go to a place of worship, worship. And, and, and for some people's stuff, you can actually go from here and go to a restaurant or, or go over somebody's house or go over your in-law's house, go over your, 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 uh, the people that you love's house and have a nice dinner and talk about the Lord. And I hope you do that. Praise God. But it, we're, we're blessed, church. We're blessed. We're blessed. So, so this Paul, along the way, while he was mid-journey, he came he came to a, a point where there, there was a light that shone unto him and basically knocked him out of the, out of the I don't know if it was a cart or a carriage or what, what he was going to, but knocked him out. And there was a voice. There was a voice. This voice was heard, but nobody else could see who was talking. And the voice asked him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Paul, not knowing who this was, simply asked, Who art thou, Lord? The voice said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Paul was persecuting the church, but Jesus said, You're persecuting me, Paul. You're persecuting me. Now, isn't it interesting that when you come against the church, that's not tolerated by the Lord. Whether it be in action or speech, it offends God. It offends the Lord. Sometimes, you know, we actually forget that when we leave the world and we come to him and become the church, it is who the Lord has died for. When, when you leave the world, when you get out of the world and you come in and you're a part of the church, you're, you're repentant. You repent. You're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You get the Holy Ghost. You're in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and yes, I, I do know John 3.16 says that he gave his son for the world. I, I get it. But it is when you turn from the world, when you accept his love and you obey the gospel that you become part of the church. You are no longer obligated, no longer obligated to the traditions of the world. You become part of the church. You become his bride. Did you know that you're special in God's eyes? Did you know that, that God looks down on you and he smiles? And, and, and I, can, I can just see, you know, and this is just me, kind of in my own little mentality stuff, I can actually see the Father upstairs, or excuse me, up in heaven right now, and just looking down and saying, hey, Gabriel, you see that one down there? That's my son right there. You see that one? That's my daughter right there. Do you see what they do? They're going through these trials. They're going through all these things, and they still praise me. They still have a love for me. They still want to seek my face. They still want to have a relationship with me even though they're going through these things. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bless them. You, angel, go down there and bless them. You go down there and go, go do this for them. You go down there and do this. God sends his blessings upon us, church. But how, how, how silly of us and how uncaring if we go ahead and we just say, you know what, oh, I think I'm going to do it my way, God. I'm going to do everything my way. I want to, I want to go ahead and try this. I want to try this. I want to do that. You know, you can't live for God on your own. Right. You cannot live for God on your own, right. church. It, it's, just, it's impossible. Well, I don't know about that. Well, I'll tell you what. Then you're going against the Word of God. You're going against the Word of God. And do you think that you're going to last very long if you go against the Word of God? It's not going to happen. So, again, you're no longer obligated when you're in the church to obey the traditions of the world. You become part of the church. You're the bride of Christ, the Bible says. It's the church that it's his bride. You want to make the Lord mad? Get in between him and his bride. Start saying something about the church. Start saying something about, uh, about the, the men and women of God who are serving God in a faithful capacity, who are trying to do things about God. Start, start moving, trying to put that little glitch in between uh, God and his bride. God doesn't like that, folks. Hallelujah. So let me ask you this. Has anybody ever thought to yourself, oh, how do we become part of the church? 
How do we do that? How do we do that? Paul asked the age-old question, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Paul's in the same situation. He was, he was cast down because of the light. The light was so bright it forced him down off of where he was at. And he asked the Lord, well, what do I do, God? What, what is it you want me to do? You know, a similar question was asked by people at the day of Pentecost. The Bible says Peter standing up with the eleven, standing up with the eleven. He had everybody behind him. He had all the guys behind him. And, they, and he, the reason why he did that that they did that for, for Peter is because they knew what he was getting ready to say. They knew it because they were taught by the Lord himself. The Bible says Peter standing up with the eleven confronted the people and the words he spoke cut them to the heart. The question was asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? What is it that I need to do to be saved? Peter concluded that what was necessary to be saved was simply this, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall, ye shall, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is a promise that's unto you and to you, everybody around you, plain and simple. It is a gift of God. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. 3,000 that day followed what the 12 declared unto them. 3,000 were added to the church that day. 3,000 broke tradition that day and obeyed the gospel. Now, you might ask yourself, what is the gospel? Well, I'm glad you asked that. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Now, who, wait, wait a second, who is this? This is Paul talking here. This is a little bit further on down the line. This is what the, the persecutor of the church, God got a hold of him, and he, his life is turned around completely. Why? Because he obeyed the gospel. He went ahead and he repented. He was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He received the Holy Ghost, and God went ahead and changed his life. Did you know that? That's available for everybody. If you haven't repented, if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, it's for you today. It's a promise and a gift that God is wanting to give you. If you haven't already received it, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let, let me continue. So it says here, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have, or which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Did you know that you stand upon the gospel of God? That you're a messenger of God? You're now a preacher of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By which ye are, I'm sorry, by which also are ye saved. You're saved by the gospel, folks. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Did you know that you have to receive the gospel? You have to receive the message? You have to actually receive what the man of God is actually trying to tell you, what's trying to get over you? And did you know the man of God is actually a reflection of what God is trying to tell the church? How much God loves you enough to actually say, wait a second, that's not the way I want you to go. I want you to go this way. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to act. This is what I want you to say. This is how I want you to think. This is what I want you to do. God loves us so much that he's willing to do that. Please excuse me. I've got a little bit of a, a scratch in my throat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, how... Of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, hallelujah, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Death, burial, resurrection, right there. So quite simply, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Paul said, I delivered unto you all that which I also received. Paul, the once persecuted of the church, is now the preacher of the gospel and declares it unto us. So when you believe on something, you act upon it. Death is simply repentance. Well, what do you mean by that, Brother George? What do you mean? How do, how do I obey the gospel? The Bible says you just repent. You repent. So repentance is not, saying I'm, it's not just saying, I'm sorry for what I've done, God. But repentance is when you're walking a certain way in your life. And you know that, that it's not right. And you know it's unpleasing to God. It, repentance is turning the opposite way and going in the direction of God, going in the direction that He wants you to go, following the, the, the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Peter told everyone, repent at the day of Pentecost. And again, when he and John were walking and he healed the lame man, together when they were walking together, he told the crowd that was amazed, you have to repent. 
You have to repent. You have to die out to your old man, your old actions, your old traditions that you were once a slave to. All the things that you were doing in your past, you turn your back on it. You turn your, your, your back on uh, the things that, that are displeasing to God and you walk towards God. You walk towards His way. You walk towards the, the gospel. You start spreading the word of God. Hallelujah. You die out to your old man, your old actions, your old traditions. Hallelujah. Burial. After you have died out to the old man, you have to bury him. You know, we, we, don't, just, we don't just leave dead bodies laying around and stuff. You actually, you actually have to bury them. So what do you, what do you mean, Brother George? I've got to go ahead and lay in a grave and stuff? Well, the grave is the water. And you're, you're baptized in the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The formula for burial is baptism. The very word baptizo is from the Greek. It means to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself, to bathe. Mark 16 and 16 says this, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth, there's that word again, believeth, he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, what, what do you mean, Brother George? What, what does that mean, believeth? Believeth in what? Believeth in what? Believeth in the gospel. Believeth in the gospel. Hallelujah. First Peter 3 and 21 says, As the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By what? By what? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. Hallelujah. Now, resurrection, let's talk about that for just a second. Resurrection is the infilling of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. John 3 and 5 says this, You must be born of the water and of the Spirit. There it is again. It's never, it's never going gonna, it's never gonna to crash against each other, folks. The Word of God is always sound. It's always flowing with each other. You must be born of the water and of the Spirit. You have to be baptized, folks. You have to be baptized in water and you have to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. John 7, 38 through 39 says this, He that believeth on me as the Scripture hath said. As the Scripture. Not, not what you think. Not what Joe Bubba down the street has told you. Not what your great grandma has told you. And God bless great grandma. I'm not putting anything against anybody. And I'm not saying great grandma was a bad person. I'm simply saying this. The Word of God takes precedent in your life. Yeah. Period. Period. There's no ifs. There's no ands. There's no buts. It takes precedent in your life. When you wake up in the morning, yeah, you crack the Bible open. You start reading what God has for you. Praise God. And, the, the, you know, when the Lord was sitting there talking and he was telling them, he said, well, you know, you're going to teach it to your children. When, you get, when they get up in the morning and stuff, you're going to teach it to them. When, at, the, at, the, at the lunchtime, you know, whenever you're sitting at the table and stuff, you're going to teach it to them. At nighttime, before they go to bed, you're going to teach it to them. It's a constant thing, folks. It's not, you know, crack open a Bible every great uh, once in a while and stuff. I was sitting there talking with Brother Pfeiffer, and we were uh, talking about uh, my past experience in, in a former, uh, well, in a former church that I used to belong to and stuff, and, and we'd go to service every great once in a while. We, we'd go during Mass and... You know, we would go during Easter and, and, and all these other uh, special times and stuff. But other than that, we, we'd never go to church. We, we would never go to church. Why? Because it wasn't necessary. We, we didn't think it was necessary and stuff. We weren't taught the Word of God. But the Bible says that the Lord told us that when, you, when your children get up, you teach them in the morning. When, when at, at, the, at the dinner table and stuff, you're going to teach them. Before they go to bed, you're going to teach them. It's a constant thing, folks. God wants you to know about Him. God wants you to have a relationship with Him. It's not just, oh, hey, how's it going, Jesus? How you doing and stuff? Yeah, I got all, all these other things I got to go ahead and do today. No, 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 church. No, 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 no. Get, get into prayer. Get into prayer. Start, start talking to the Lord. You know, it's not, a, it's not about just... You know, having those those serious, you know, you know, get down on your knees and just just going crazy and stuff. It's spending time with the Lord. It's a it's a constant thing. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's there's times that uh, I heard one man say this. You know, there there's I don't think there's probably three or four senses that I go throughout my day and stuff that I don't speak to the Lord. I don't talk to the Lord. Well, what do you, Lord, what do you think about this? How am I going to handle this situation? God, I need counsel in this thing. What, how am I supposed to talk to these people? And stuff? What, what am I supposed to say? Lord, what, what am I going to do with my finances, God? How, how, how am I supposed to do this? You're asking for God's counsel. You're asking for God's blessing. You're asking for, for God to take part in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. Talk about the Holy Ghost here. Which they that believe on him should receive. 
should receive. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 9 through 11 says this, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that be that the spirit of God dwell in you. If you have the Holy Ghost, you're of the spirit. Now, if any man have, now listen to this. I want you to listen to this real quick. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Think about that. I want you to think about that for a second. If you don't have the spirit of Christ in you, you're none of his. That's a very powerful statement. That's not my statement, folks. That's directly out of the Bible. That's God's word. That's not my word. That's God's word. Hallelujah. You want to be delivered from tradition? Believe and obey the gospel. Move on what you've been taught. Experience God in a more intimate fashion than what you have in the past. Paul did it, folks. Paul is our example. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't experience the resurrection. You can't experience the resurrection day without the death and burial first. You have to have the gospel. It's imperative. I don't know. I was talking with Godfrey, or actually we were texting back and forth. Thank you, Jesus. And and little brother said, oh my God. You know, he said, do you, do you have anything this morning? Do you you know do you have your a title of your message? Do you have the scriptures and stuff? Anything I can go ahead and... I said, yeah. I said, I, I do. So I went in. I said, I just got to my phone. I kept my phone downstairs. I don't bring it with me. And I, I texted him back. I said, yeah, this is it and stuff. He goes, wow. He said, this is the exact same thing I'm teaching today. I was like, well, praise God. We're, you know, we're in the same thing together. Praise God. So it, it's good, but it's the flow of the Spirit, folks. It's the moving of the Spirit of God. When, when, when you get into the church and you give yourself to God and you give everything, you don't hold back. And, and I used to hold back. I, 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 was, I was scared. I'll, I'll tell you this real quick and stuff. I, I first came into church and, and I came from a Catholic background. Okay? I didn't know about it. This stuff was spooky, folks. I'm just going to let you know right now. You know, you see people running around and stuff, and, and people sitting there, you know, they're so moved on by the Spirit of God, they're sitting there grabbing a pew in front of them, and their knuckles are turning white. You're sitting there thinking, oh, man, this is a crazy crowd. And then you see Sister, what's her name, running around the, running around the aisle screaming, praise God! You know, and you hear these stories about people swinging from chandeliers and, and the holy rollers and all this other stuff terrified me. I don't want them crazy people getting all over me. I didn't want that mess. No, no, you, you guys can keep that stuff. I'll stay over here where it's safe, you know. But my deal was, uh, you know, I wanted, I wanted more of God, and I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know what I was doing, and, and I would pray, and, and you know, and, and it was just a quick, you know, I thought it was just, I thought it was probably about a two or three hours and stuff. It's probably only two or three minutes. But I'd ask the Lord, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing, God. I need help. I need help. I need help. Did you know that, that when, you, when you come to the Lord, He doesn't leave you helpless? Yeah. He sends somebody to you. Did you know that you have to have a man sent to you, or not just a man, excuse me? I use that. Anyway, so God sends somebody to you to teach you about the gospel, to, to show you, uh, to witness to you about the gospel. God, if, if you really have a, a desire in your heart to serve God, if you really want God to be a part of your life, if you really want to be a part of, of God's stuff, you're going to open yourself up to Him and you're going to ask for help. Hallelujah. And I honestly believe that that's what Paul did. I believe that's what Paul did. Even though he was going against the church, at, before he before he was converted, before, before all this stuff, and he was dragging them in and stuff, he thought it was heresy. It's just another bunch of crazy people and stuff. And I was the same way, folks. I looked at I looked at you know you holy rollers, and I thought, oh man, I don't I don't want that in my life. That's crazy and stuff. But somebody invited me to church, and the girl that was next to me was raising her hands, and she was she was talking German or, or Swedish or something. And I was just kind of looking, and I was like, that ain't Spanish. You know, what, what is that? Is that German? I was like, well, I think she said something about Swedish or something in her family or whatever. Started talking to her and stuff. And I said, so after service, I asked her, I said, what's, was that Swedish you were talking in or something? She goes, what? I said, was that Swedish you were talking in? She goes, what are you talking about? I said, you had your hands up and you started speaking kind of really weird. She goes, no, that's the Holy Ghost. I said, well, what's the Holy Ghost? And she says, you don't know that? I said, no. I said, well, they don't teach us that in Catholic Church. And so we, we, she starts talking to me about it and stuff, and then that's the opening. That's the opening. That's, that, that's, that's the premise. And, and God starts building on top of that. And I start getting a little bit curious. 
and so I, I, I do start learning about the Bible and I start going to the church and I, and I see people being moved upon and it's slowly starting and it's slowly starting to build up in me and stuff and I start learning about the Word of God. I start getting into my Bible and pretty soon I can't, I can't, I cannot go a day without reading the Bible. And it's, just, it's addictive, folks. And I'm just telling you right now, once you get into church, honey, let me tell you something, it's addictive. The Word of God is addictive. It's addictive. Why? Because it feeds your soul. It feeds that, that place in you that, that you that you have a desire for with God. And it, and it starts teaching you about it. And you start, reading about, uh, you start reading about everything in the Bible, about what Jesus went through and about what the disciples learned and about all these crazy things and about, you know, some some. Son of the prophet was sitting there chopping wood, and the axe head falls off in the, in the river, and he's like, "Oh, you know, alas, master, for it was, you know, it was borrowed. You know, I didn't have the money to go ahead and have this axe, but you know, it's it, it was borrowed. I borrowed it from my neighbor and stuff. And the prophet, and, and and you know, bear with me for a second. Think about that for just a second. The prophet goes, "You know what? Give me that stick." And he grabs a stick, and he says, "Where was it at?" And he said, "Well, I dropped it right over there." He pitches a stick and throws it in the water. Next thing you know, here, here, comes a, here comes the axe head swimming up on the water. Does that sound crazy? I mean, be honest with me now. So I started thinking about that. I started learning about that stuff. And I thought, wow, that's, that's incredible. So the whole deal is, and yes, I know I'm kind of rambling on. Give me just a second. So I, I go ahead and I, and I start learning about this stuff. And I start really getting intrigued with God. I start, I start really, and then I start a prayer life. And, you know, so I start, I start trying to pray and stuff. And, and yes, it was... It was a little bit longer. It was about five minutes a day. So I started praying and, and you know, God starts showing me these things. And then we, we, get into, we get into a little apostolic church there in Dell City, Oklahoma. And I started learning about this stuff. And, and I was like, oh, okay, well, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody, somebody told uh, an elder in the church, uh, started telling her uh, about how, you know, she hopes I actually go ahead and get into church and stuff. And the, and the, the elder, elder lady and stuff, I love you, sister monks. Uh, she goes ahead and uh, she says, well, honey, he, he's got to have the Holy Ghost. And, and the person that I was with and stuff at that time goes, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, you have to have the Holy Ghost if you want to go to heaven. And she's like, well, he doesn't have the Holy Ghost. She goes, well, honey, he's not going to heaven. He's, he needs to get the Holy Ghost. And she came to me like this. And this was me at the time. I was like, honey, She's an old woman and stuff. She's into religion and stuff, and, and, and I get it and stuff. It, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Let me tell you something, folks. God was trying to deal with you. God's trying to, if God's moving upon you for a message, and, he, and if it's not just one time, but he's moving on you another time, and, and he's trying to tell you something another time through three separate people, you might want to listen. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. So we go ahead and we get in and I see people start getting the Holy Ghost in this church. I see, I see God moving upon everybody. And, uh, and I'm trying to get into it too and stuff, but I'm still kind of nervous. I'm still kind of scared. I still didn't know if all that stuff was real. I was like, oh, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's still kind of terrifying seeing all these people running around and stuff, kind of crazy. So Lee Stone King, I don't know if you know who this guy is. Lee Stone King, one of the, one, one of the greatest men in Pentecost right now. I'll, I'll just say it. I mean, I like the man. He, he was coming to the Okima Church, and this was, I was in Oklahoma at the time. He's coming to the Okima Church. Everybody was making a big deal about it, and I talked to, uh, I talked to Bubba about it, and he said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, if you get a chance, you need to go see him. I said, yeah. He goes, yeah. He said, you need to go. I said, oh, okay. So we make the trick, uh, trip out there and stuff. He gets done with his message. He says, hey, look, I'm just going to say this right now. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I want you to come up here right now. Everybody, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I want you to make your way up to the altar. We're going to pray for you, and God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. Well, I was like, okay, this is it. This is it. So I start making my way up there. Like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the Holy Ghost stuff. I'm still nervous, folks. Still nervous. I go up there and I start praying. I put my hand down and stuff. Brother Sharp comes over, puts his hand on palm me and stuff, starts praying with me and stuff. And I, and I, I was just being honest. I said, hey, look, Brother Sharp. I said, I, you know, I, I don't know if all this stuff is real or not. I, I, you know, I see all these people around and stuff. I said, I, I don't know if this is real or not. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not trying to offend anybody, but trying to understand what I'm saying. And he says, Brother George... He said, this is real. This is biblical. If, if, if you've been reading through the Bible stuff, have you, have you read about the death, burial, and resurrection? I said, yes. And he starts telling me all this stuff. And he said, and it's a promise that God has given you, okay? But yeah. you have to receive it. You have to take it in. You have to accept it. It is, it is for you, but you have to accept it. I can't force it upon you. Nobody can force the Holy Ghost upon you. You have to receive it. So 
I was still nervous and scared and stuff, so I didn't, I didn't know if I needed to trust him or not. So anyway, so later on, yeah, I know, it's kind of crazy. So anyway, so as we go on and stuff later on, I think probably about three months later, yes, it was a long time. I, was, I worked crazy hours back then too. Got in church, we were having a revival. And the revival was from, from uh, there was, there was 11, I think 11 people that got the Holy Ghost. It was from the age six until 60 and, I, and uh, the, the youngest person was six years old. The oldest person was 60 years old. Uh, uh, and so I was one of those people and stuff. And, and I, I got the Holy Ghost. And I'll never forget when I was up at the altar and stuff, I came in and, man, I was tired. I was tired. And, and I thought, okay, I, I need to get the Holy Ghost. So they called, uh, they called everybody up to the front and said, if you want to get the Holy Ghost, come on up here right now. So I came up here and I put my hands up and I started praying. And the man of God says, all right, brother, we're going we're gonna to pray for you and stuff right now. And, and I had my hands up, my hands started shaking. And, and I, said, I said, brother, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I'm, I'm really super tired. My hands, my arms feel so heavy. And I put them down. And the man said, okay, so let's go ahead and continue to pray. So I started praying. And something came over me and said, you know what? The Lord went through all that. And you can't even put your hands up and worship him like you, you really need to worship him. And I thought, all right, I, I, know, I know what that is. And stuff. So I put, put my hands up. He, he starts trying to put my hands down. I said, no, 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 brother. He said, brother, go ahead and just put your hands down. It'll be all right. And I said, no, no, no. I said, I really feel like I need to do this. So as soon as I put, as soon as I put my hands up and stuff, the Spirit of God hit me, bam, just right there. I started speaking in tongues right then and there. It just, it just, I mean, it just hit me. And I was like, wow. And I started, I started hearing myself speak in tongues. And, and, and it was just, it was amazing. And I was like, wow, this is actually really happening in my mind. I was like, I'm actually speaking in tongues. And, and, and then the thought hit me, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. I started bouncing around everywhere. And I was like, praise God. And everybody around me started screaming. And, then, and certain ladies, you know, bobby pins start flying everywhere. And people were screaming, dancing, rolling around everywhere. And, you know, and everybody was all happy and stuff. And I, was, I mean, I was pretty happy too and stuff. But let me tell you something, folks. Today, the gospel message is still true today as it was back then it, it, there, there's no loss to this power the resurrection is still is still here folks and it's still part of our lives but i'll tell you what you have to do what pastor says you have to believe the bible says you have to believe he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water talking about believing what believing the gospel the gospel is our, is our I, I don't know if you, you call it our, our war banner, or our war cry, but praise God, it's what needs to be spread. It's the saving power of the gospel. It's the gospel message. Hallelujah. Can we all stand, please? Father, we love you. We appreciate you so much, God. We're, 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 we, we just love you, Lord. God, words cannot describe, Father, the, the, the love that we have for you, God, for the mercy that you've shown to us. God, the words that you have given us, God, to read. Lord, the words of everlasting life. Father, you lead us in the way, God. You instruct us. You show us, God. You give us wisdom. You give us direction. God, you give us counsel, God, to live. Father, Help us, God. Help us to, to know and to understand, God, to not let this pass by us, God. We don't want to be, God, just hearers of the word, God, but we want to be doers of the word. Help us to spread your gospel. God, let it be our war cry, God. Help us to spread your gospel. In Jesus' name, I'm going to open up these altars. If you want to come pray, come pray. I want to open up these altars. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can have the Holy Ghost today, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To you be the glory.